Number 15. Miskovich's Emeralds Jay Miskovich emerged from his dive off the coast of Florida with more than a brush with sharks. He'd found what appeared to be emeralds from the wreckage of a 16th century Spanish galleon. Miskovich, a real estate developer from Pennsylvania, said that a shady man called Cunningham sold him a $500 treasure map, which led him to the location not far from the coast, 55 feet underwater. He purportedly discovered hundreds of uncut emeralds, along with other ancient relics. Miskovich said he gathered the emeralds from the floor of the ocean, like cherries on a cherry tree. Instead of reporting the find, he created JTR Enterprises, his own salvage company, so as to get away with marine salvage law. He sent his brother and other divers to recover the emeralds, and even paid off the man who sold him the map, Cunningham, with $50,000. He also visited Josh Lentz in New York, a gemologist, to find out if the gems were authentic and value them. Lentz found that the emeralds were Colombian, and Sotheby's appraised the emeralds between $25,000 and $80,000. If the jewels were from a famous shipwreck, experts said they'd be worth even more. As disputes arose as to the ownership of the location where the emeralds were discovered, the treasure's legitimacy was questioned when the emeralds were found to be coated with modern epoxy. Did Miskovich try to pass off these modern emeralds as ancient pirates' booty? Hoax or not, these beauties are a mystery. Number 14. Yona Gunny Monument this underwater complex, discovered near Japan in 1985, is one of the most mysterious things found underwater. Often called Japan's Atlantis, or Yonaguni submarine ruins. The question of whether Yonaguni is naturally formed or man-made has been up for debate in the world of research and archaeology since the day the monument was discovered by Kiachiro Eretik, a dive tour operator. Located right near the coast of the southernmost Ryukyu Island, the Yonaguni complex is full of strange structures. Historians suggest that these are the ruins of Mu, which is a civilization in the Pacific that's said to have disappeared from the face of the Earth. Yonaguni's primary monument is made up of fine to medium mudstone and sandstone, which is from the Lower Miocene Yayama group, the deposit of which dates back 20 million years. This means if man made the Yonaguni monument, the thing was built around 10,000 years ago during the last ice age. During this period, Yonaguni served as a land bridge across to Taiwan. Some believe that the formations are man-made steeped monoliths such as Masakai Kamira. Professor Emeritus from the Faculty of Science at the University. However, others dispute this idea. Patrick D. Nunn, Professor of Oceanic Geoscience at the University of the South Pacific, says that the underwater formations are mirrored in those of the San Inode Slate Cliffs, which suggests the monument is a natural phenomenon. He concluded, there seems no reason to suppose that they are artificial. Geologist Robert Soch of Boston University is middle of the road on the subject. Though he says the monument is likely naturally formed, he also suggests perhaps humans had used or modified it at some point in its history. Until the DeLorean is up and running again, we'll never know. Number 13. Scary Mayan Skulls Is it Dia de los Mirtos? A southern Mexican sinkhole, flooded with elongated skulls says it is. Situated in the Yucatan Peninsula, Sacuayum is an underwater cenote, or in layman's terms, a pit in the earth that naturally occurs from the collapsing limestone bedrock. Below the bedrock is groundwater. Cenotes were often used as garbage pits for bones and skulls it seems, or rather for sacrificial offerings by the ancient Mayans. Locals are terrified by this cenote in particular. In fact, legend has it that this cavern is guarded by a horse-headed, feathered serpent. If that wasn't scary enough, the older generation claims it's actually seen the serpent guard in Telchok Eyo village near the cenote. They say he sat perched in a tree, jumped into the air where he twirled around three times, then dove into the water. When archaeologists decided to dive into the cenote themselves, in 2014, they found a reason to be afraid. Elongated skulls were discovered in the underwater cave, along with over a dozen human remains. Upon examination, archaeologists found no indications suggesting a violence, so these Mayans were probably not sacrificial lambs led to the slaughter. No known cause has been declared. As for the elongated skulls, the Mayans have been known to intentionally flatten the heads of their babies during infancy. There's also no known reason for this practice. Those mysterious Mayans, they're what myths and legends are made of. Number 12. The Mongol Invasion A warship was found about 1.7 kilometers away from another known ship using sonar equipment, but this was no ordinary warship. This was a 13th century Mongolian warship. The Mongols made two stabs at invading Japan in both 1274 and 1281 AD. Genghis Khan's son, 
Kublai Khan led the Mongol fleet towards Japan. However, ironically, enormous typhoons destroyed the Mongol fleets on both occasions. The enemy ships were forced to turn back, saving Japan the trouble of fighting off the formidable Mongols and sinking a good portion of the fleet. Of course, not every ship made it back. Some were obliterated by the typhoon. Japan saw this not only as justice, but as an act of God, or gods rather. They believed the kamikaze, or divine wind, sent by the gods protected Japan from foreign invasion. The wreckage found was right off of Takashima Island. Archaeologists used sonar equipment to find the warship, which was nearby the wreckage of a 2011 finding. The ghostly bow of the ship consists of port and starboard sides, along with 11 meter long plank wood which has been preserved. A stone ballast was also discovered by divers. Archaeologists will continue searching for its keel. We plan to clarify details like its structure, size, and origin by excavating further said lead researcher Yoshifumi Aikida, a professor of archaeology. It's well preserved, so we expect it to carry a significant load of cargo like porcelain and weapons. Number 11. The Antikythera Mechanism The old school analog computer, known as the Antikythera Mechanism, wasn't used to surf the net, watch YouTube videos, or troll random strangers. Rather, it was used to foresee eclipses in astronomical positions for the purposes of keeping the calendar and also to light up the Olympic game cycle. The mechanism was kept in a wooden box and was composed of more than 30 meshing bronze gears. The clockwork device was divided into 82 fragments, four of which contained gears, while others contained inscriptions. The complexity and quality of design demonstrates how Greek theorists of mathematics and astronomy helped develop its construction. Dated between 205 and 100 BC, Greek scientists are believed to have created the device. The design disappeared at some point, after which nothing even near this technical complexity appeared until 14th century European astronomical clocks. Discovered aboard a shipwreck in 1901, the Antikythera mechanism was located off the Greek island with the same name. Jewelry, glassware, coins, pottery, and marble and bronze statues were also discovered at the site. Scholars believe that the mechanism, along with the treasures, were being transferred from Rhodes to Rome for a celebratory parade put on by Julius Caesar. The mechanism is now housed at the National Museum of Archaeology in Athens, along with many of the other artifacts found at the shipwreck. Number 10. Anti-Rhodos Imagine Cleopatra in the Ptolemaic Palace on an island right off of Alexandria. Now imagine this island underwater. That would be Anti-Rhodos, an island that was occupied until Karkala and Septemus Service's reign, the Egyptian, not the Slytherin. This island is estimated to have sunk in the 4th century BC. Earthquakes and a massive tsunami are said to be the perpetrators of its sinking, as the two blasted off near Crete around 365 in the Mediterranean. Nowadays, the underwater island can be found near Alexandria, 16 feet below deck. Greek historians and geographers describe the island in records, with Strabo calling the royal palace Anti-Rhodos, referring to the rivalry between the island and Rhodes. Anti-Rhodos also comprised a portion of Portus Magnus, Alexandria's royal port, which was altogether abandoned in the 8th century after yet another earthquake. Anti-Rhodos was only rediscovered in 1996 when archaeologist Frank Gaudio led a team which uncovered the island. Excavations found a fully paved island of about 1,200 acres, with three roads heading in different directions, the main one leading to Caesarium Temple on the mainland. Gaudio also discovered the marble floors of Cleopatra's palace. Also on the island, a port with docks, ancient paintings, the Timonium, Mark Anthony's incomplete palace, and nearby, the wreckage of a first century Roman ship. Number 9. Queen Anne's Revenge Made famous by Blackbeard, Queen Anne's Revenge served as the pirate's flagship for less than a year but took in quite a booty in the process. First launched by the English in 1710, this merchant vessel was captured by the French a year later and turned into a slave ship. Six years later, Blackbeard was given the ship by Captain Benjamin Hornigold, another pirate. Blackbeard, who once fought with the Royal Navy in Queen Anne's War, renamed the flagship Queen Anne's Revenge, and Queen Anne took her revenge out all over the sea. As Blackbeard proceeded to sail the ship from the African coast to the Caribbean, pillaging English, Portuguese, and Dutch merchant ships the whole while. Not long after captaining the ship, Blackbeard ran it aground at Beaufort Inlet, North Carolina, leaving the flagship behind. 
He transported his crew and supplies via smaller vessels. The ship was rediscovered by a private research firm, which located at about a mile off the shores of Fort Macon State Park, around 28 feet underwater. On board, the maritime archaeologists found 31 cannons, French, English, and Swedish made, along with over 250,000 artifacts, including guns, coins, ballast stones, lead strainer fragments, loose ceramic and pewter fragments, a nesting weight, cannon apron, and a sword guard. That's a lot of pirates' treasure for a ghost ship. Number 8. Million Dollar Wreck If you're looking for ship wreckage, then head on over to Tuck Lagoon right off of Micronesia. This is the place to find World War II tanks, trucks, planes, ships, and other military artifacts. Amidst the mess of military wreckage, you'll find the Million Dollar Wreck, otherwise known as San Francisco Maru. It's called this because the ship was overflowing with expensive cargo, like torpedoes, aircraft bombs, mines, tanks, trucks, and other ammunition. Built in 1919, the San Francisco Maru was part of a 50-ship cargo fleet that was commissioned into the Japanese Imperial Navy, where it transported cargo from Pacific Island territories to Japan. After being attacked in Weewok, New Guinea in 1943, the ship was sent to Inoshima for repair, where it was again attacked by a U.S. naval air and surface attack on truck called Operation Hailstorm. In 1944, a 500-pound bomb was dropped on the ship, sinking it to the bottom of the ocean. In 1969, the wreck was discovered by Cousteau's truck expedition, sunk beneath 205 feet of water, with the top deck at around 165 feet. For recreational divers, the cargo is out of recommended reach. Still, local dive companies take divers under with extra air and staging tanks so that they can take a gander. Underwater, there's excellent visibility, and there's lots to explore. Another similar and quite notable shipwreck the SS Thistle Gorm can be found in the Red Sea. While easier for recreational divers, the discoveries there are just as amazing. With trucks and armored vehicles now stuck at the bottom of the sea, slowly deteriorating. Number 7. Underwater Rivers and Lakes How is it possible for a river or lake to exist underwater? I mean, how can water be underwater? Well, some amateur cave divers uncovered just that in Mexico, a river with two banks, trees with leaves. As they swam in their scuba gear 25 feet above the underwater river, they were gobsmacked. The river was found to be a combination of hydrogen sulfide and salt water, denser than normal salt water. Therefore, it sinks to the bottom of the sea, creating a specific formation that behaves like a flowing river. The fact that hydrogen sulfide is extraordinarily toxic means that there isn't likely marine life swimming in the underwater river. On the other hand, fishies can find a home in the deep sea lake. The other strange underwater formation is located at the Abyssal Plain, past the continental shelf. Looking just like an above-ground lake, deep-sea lakes have rocky or sandy shores and are known as cold seas by scientists. Lots of marine life takes up space in these lakes, and in fact, those lakes with rocky shores are actually full of a great many mussels. The lakes even have their own waves, so pack up your bathing gear and spread out on the underwater beach, or catch a surf in this Twilight Zone underwater mystery. Number 6. The Gigantic Eye a gigantic blue eye was discovered just off of Florida Beach. Creepy, eh? Before you start throwing out hypotheses as to whom it belongs to, perhaps an alien or a giant underwater kraken, check out what fish and wildlife officials are saying. They believe the blinking eye was shred out of a swordfish by a fisherman and thrown overboard. Joan Herrera at the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission's Research Institute said experts on site and remotely have viewed and analyzed the eye, and based on its color, size, and structure, along with the presence of bone around it, we believe the eye came from a swordfish. Based on straight line cuts visible around the eye, we believe it was removed by a fisherman and discarded. But what kind of swordfish is of the size and magnitude of this giant eye? Well, the Atlantic Ocean swordfish have been known to grow to the size of 1,100 pounds. Yikes, wouldn't want to stare deeply into that giant eyeball. So it's understandable why the fisherman in question chucked it off his boat. Although the source of the eye is likely explainable, it's still an uncommon find. As biologist Esong Ki Johnson of Duke University noted, you usually don't find random floating eyes of any animal, like a swordfish or marlin. They get seriously big, but people don't realize it's because most of the eye is inside the head. Here's hoping you're never forced into a staring contest with the Atlantic swordfish. Number 5. Sea of Galilee Stone Circle a mysterious circular stone structure was found in Israel's Sea of Galilee in 2003, double the size of Stonehenge, formed of basalt rocks, and clocking at around 60,000 tons. 
The structure is shaped like a cone. The mysterious thing is, nobody knows the colossal structure's function. Some archaeologists say that the structure appears to be an enormous bronze statue. Others claim it looks more like an ancient burial ground. Still, others think that maybe it's something artificial or alien. Still, there are no answers. Dates from the formation are uncertain. Archaeologists have been so far unable to excavate the structure, due to its size and the cost of such an excavation. Not only are we clueless as to its use, but nothing of similar size and structure has been discovered underwater. So bring on the speculation. Number 4. Lake Michigan Stonehenge Yet another Stonehenge underwater discovery. This one was found stateside in Lake Michigan by Northwestern Michigan College professors using sonar to scan for old boat racks. Below the freezing cold Lake Michigan surface is an array of stones patterned out. The discovery was made in 2007, 40 feet beneath the chilly water surface. Unexplainable, it appears very much like the famous Stonehenge. It was really spooky when we saw it in the water. Professor of underwater archaeology Mark Hawley said, The whole site is spooky in a way. When when you're swimming through a long line of stones and the rest of the lake bed is featureless, it's just spooky. Even spookier, one of the stones has the image of Mastodon on it, which went extinct approximately 10,000 years ago. Stone circles and ancient glyphs aren't foreign to Michigan. The state is chock full of them. So is this just another ancient artifact to add to the numbers? Most believe it is. But others are speculative. Charles Cleland, for instance, the retired curator of Great Lakes Archaeology and Ethnology at Michigan State University said that although he's skeptical, he thinks it's worth investigating. It would be unthinkable to leave it alone and not try to figure it out, he said. Number 3. Milky Sea Deep in the Great White Yonder, sailors have long claimed they came upon milky glowing waters, stretching beyond what they could see. Many believe these imaginings were made up or maybe even delirium or a mirage, but reports of these lactating waters were still being made in modern times, specifically in the Indian Ocean. That is, until some scientists, led by Dr. Stephen Miller of the Naval Research Laboratory, set out to investigate the matter. Using satellite data from a 1995 report by the SS Lima, a British merchant vessel which said, On a clear moonless night, while 150 miles east of the Somalian coast, a whitish glow was observed on the horizon and, after 15 minutes of steaming, the ship was completely surrounded by a sea of milky white color with a fairly uniform luminescence. It appeared as though the ship was sailing over a field of snow or gliding through the clouds. Miller's team pinpointed the area in which the milky substance appeared which he found was that satellite images showed a low-level light in the area where the Lima had been sailing. With this confirmation, they gathered some water from the Arabian Sea in which they discovered a bioluminescent bacteria called Vibro Harei in the water. Although a mystery surrounds why this bacteria tends to congregate in great numbers, scientists suggest they are coming together to colonize organic matter. Mystery solved. Number 2. The Crawler Secure Team 10, an alien hunting conspiracy theorist group, found something where they least expected it. On the ocean floor, something like a gigantic crab seemed to be crawling across the Pacific Ocean floor, 3,000 feet underwater. The crawler was technically ginormous, over 2.5 miles across, and had traveled quite far, leaving 41 miles of tracks behind it. Many believed the object to be artificial, and the fact that the track looked like tank treads seemed to confirm it's mechanical, not organic. The YouTube video's creator, Tyler, says, As you're seeing here, we have some very strange lines that almost look like a large vehicle was moving on the bottom of the ocean. However, some of these tracks definitely seem to be dug into the soil and are complete with shadows and basically look like massive trenches that aren't just images, artifacts, or sonar readings or anything like that. Tyler also suggests that the objects belongs to aliens, saying, There are certain of areas of the ocean that are obviously blurred out, but what better place would there be for another race or another group of beings to hide than in the deep of our own oceans? Skeptics abound, however, with one user responding that this is an algorithm, not an actual photo on Google Earth of the sea floor. Another user says that the parallel lines were likely natural tectonic fissures, while the wavy line was most likely an underwater current. And what is the big bump? Likely just a rock, the user suggests. Before we get to number one, my name is Chills and I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you've ever been curious as to what I look like in real life, then follow me on Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT with underscores instead of spaces. I also have a Twitter at YT underscore Chills where I post video updates. I'd really appreciate it if you followed me and feel free to send me a DM if you have any questions or suggestions. If you'd like to see more of these videos in the future, then hit that subscribe button because we upload new countdowns every Tuesday and Saturday. Number 1. Manganese Balls 
Thick gatherings of large metal nodules were discovered by scientists on the ocean floor between Africa and South America. These balls were pulled up by a German research ship a few hundred miles from Barbados. The manganese ore balls were larger than the size of a softball, and when a camera was sent underwater to investigate, it found that there were hundreds of these things, with some growing to bowling ball proportions. Colin Devey, volcanologist at Geomar Helmholtz Center for Ocean Research and leader of the expedition said, I was surprised because this is generally not the place you think for manganese no jewels, said Colin Devey. These were very, very circular, which is strange. They usually look like cow flops. The lumps are formed by several layers of metal ore which crystallize around the core. The core could be a no jewel fragment, a fossil, or a rock. The no jewels are believed to grow at a slow rate, around one centimeter in a million years which means some of these nodules are super old. Not only that, but their origins are still a mystery, with some believing they're caused by chemical reactions, or perhaps our underwater marine life are bowling and playing softball in their downtime. Thanks for checking out this video. Be sure to subscribe because we upload new countdowns every Tuesday and Saturday. Or if you're still not convinced, here are some of our other videos that I think you'd like. Enjoy!